Packing for nationals, thought I would show you guys what do I take with me on the plane, what's most important, and how do I put it in here. So let's take a look. Now this is my backpack. It's my 511. I've had it for years now. It is probably one of the best backpacks I've ever owned. Uh, I bought it specifically. It took me a long time searching for a backpack that would meet my needs. It doesn't mean it's going to meet your needs, but uh, I like 511 stuff. I think they make amazing bags, but you know, honestly, there's a lot of other really good backpacks out there too. Uh, however, this one uh, fits, it sort of checks a couple boxes. One, I don't like, I could have gotten one that was slightly bigger, but it had like those uh, hiking flaps, you know, that go around your hips down here. And I really didn't want that because they weren't removable. The ones on this one are removable. So that was important to me. I also needed something that was big enough, but not too big that it couldn't fit in overhead storage or, you know, in, in a something, you know, where the height wasn't getting obscene. And, and that's the struggle because some of these backpacks, if you start stuffing them, they can actually get taller than some of your carry on baggage that you would normally buy. And, um, you know, like I go on a bunch of different kinds of planes and some are bigger, some are smaller. And the last thing I want, uh, what I really need to ensure is that this bag does not end up getting turned into a checked bag. So especially if you're on like puddle jumpers, you know, little, uh, bombardiers and stuff like that, their overhead baggage is definitely smaller than something like an Airbus, like an A380 or something. And as a result, uh, this bag for me has just like just squeaked into like a bombardier overhead or um there's another plane too i can't think of it but it's the alternate to a bombardier but you know think of like one hour puddle jumps and i have to frequently go from portland up to seattle because seattle's an alaska hub and uh, portland sadly is not so what do i put in here well there's a bunch of different pockets bunch of different things my primary little pockets up here so there's a couple of uh, smaller pockets, they open up and this is all my little electronic stuff. So I've got, uh, and I actually don't have it all in here yet, but I've got things like my charging cords. I've got wall plugs. I've got, uh, you know, if I need it, this is a little holder for my cell phone on the plane. Uh, I also keep some spare change in here in case for some reason I lose change in my pocket and need some money. Uh, just little things like that. Uh, but it's just my electronics, my headphones, things like that that I don't want to have to worry about trying to find if they are you know, buried inside here. I have my bigger section on the front here, and this is gonna get filled with some more per personal type stuff, uh, some medicines and just some little uh, odds and ends that I'll do after I'm done putting all this other big stuff in. But uh, again, it's, uh, it's nothing critical in terms of like shooting stuff, but you know, that's just, um, that's just that one. And uh, one other thing that I do that I should say is that before, like, literally every time I fly, I go through and I take everything out of this backpack. So I've already repacked everything in here, uh, but I just have learned over time and through, you know, my own mistakes, which, you know, they're mistakes, so they happen. Uh, but I have learned the hard way that uh, sometimes dumb things can happen. So my backpack, ever since I had an incident where I accidentally left a bolt in my backpack and forgot I'd put it there and went through TSA and it was a whole thing. Uh, and I did a whole video and, and again, like Tennessee was awesome and, and I appreciate everybody there, but, um, you know, it was totally on me. And so, uh, that was an event where I had brought an extra bolt with me in case there was a problem and I had thrown it in my backpack and forgotten it was there. So ever since that event, and it's been, I think three years now, Ever since that event, my backpack when I travel never gets anything put into it. Um, like when I go from the house to the range or anything like that, I'll put a sweatshirt in, I'll put food and drinks and that's literally it. And that way I never have to question what is going on with my backpack uh, when I leave. Now, when I go to pack up to leave, I still take a look through my backpack, make sure you know somebody didn't accidentally throw something in there or whatever, but uh, I've gotten in a really good habit of not using this for transporting gun related parts, you know, whether it's bolts, triggers, things like that. And, um, and so, you know, that's, that's the way that goes. And, um, so let's go ahead and I'll show you uh, a couple things that I have here. Now, one thing to keep in mind, anything that has any kind of rechargeable battery, um, you know, like uh, lithium batteries in it, have to go in your carry-on. You cannot put those in checked baggage. And so that's gonna be things, and I'll pack them in here in a minute, but that's gonna be things like, uh, you know, my Garmin, 
Uh, so that's my chronograph. I've got uh, like this here. That's going to be a um, rechargeable. So this is my um, barrel cooler. And if you have anything else like that, you need to make sure like my, my microphones that I'm using right now, they'll get put in here. But things you need to be careful that you don't put in here are gun parts. So this could easily get put in. This is a spare trigger on a trigger hanger for my Borden. And it could easily get put in here. And that is a big, big no-no. Uh, so gun parts, uh, you know, the triggers, bolts, uh, things like that. Uh, they cannot go in here. So you have to be really careful because if you're not paying attention, you could very easily throw something like that in there. So this goes in checked baggage. You need to make sure that's where it ends up. So we're going to throw that back over there. But what can you put in here? Well, uh, among other things, I can put my scopes. I've, I always take my optics with me. So my spotting scope's gonna go in here. Uh, my, uh, my march, so here's my march high power that I do, my Majesta. And you can see what I do here is I actually put it uh, in a sleeve, in a sleeve. So this is my Majesta. It is off of the, uh, the gun. I don't travel with my scope on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this little neoprene sleeve and I'll put links to all these cases that I have uh, in the description below if you're looking for it. So this on its own would probably be okay. I've traveled plenty of times with a neoprene about like that, but uh, I did find uh, this really cool case which has this nice lining and everything slips in and out real easily. And you know, we're talking about a $4,000 scope. So what's a little extra protection as my buddy Chris says, and so we did uh, play around and came up with this, which just gives it a little extra protection when it's in the bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the big stuff and I'm going to put my scope down the middle like this. And then because you've got a little bit of a curve and because this has a little bit of a curve, I tend to use that curve to my advantage by putting the spotting scope over on the left side. Okay, and you can see that it gives me plenty of room still in here. Now I'm going to take uh, my little case here, throw it in. I'm gonna take my Garmin, throw it in here. I've got my Mitotoyo calipers. They're going to go in. And then, um, uh, you know what, actually, I don't know. I might put those back in checked baggage. I need to make sure something else fits first. So the other thing that I have to make sure goes in here, cause I don't always take the calipers. Uh, but what I do always take because of team events are going to be four sets of headsets. So I've got these headsets here. I've also got a charger and then I've got the batteries. The batteries I'm always good about. Again, these have to go in my carry on. So I could put these in my check baggage if I had room because there's no batteries in them, but these lithium batteries have to go in the carried pack. And then I always put them in their own little Ziploc bags just so that there's no question about, you know, any, any kind of, um, uh, you know, touching off of the two, the two tabs. If for some reason they, they run into another piece of metal in here, which they shouldn't, but you know, like you don't want to be that guy on a plane that, <laughs> that ends up, um, you know, causing a problem. And you know, these, these headsets come in a nice carry box, but it's virtually useless for my purposes on a plane. So I'm going to put that aside and that's going to go with all of my, when I return stuff. So I've got that, I've got my charger and I've got the batteries here. Uh, now the batteries I can throw down in one of these side pockets where there's a little extra room. Okay. And I always take, I know this seems like kind of a weird thing, but um, you know, we stay in a lot of Airbnbs, occasionally hotels. And uh, you know, I end up with a lot of neck pain and back pain and stuff like that. And so I bought one of these just uh, old school, fill it with ice and water and close it up. And I can't tell you how many times having this has just absolutely been uh, amazing at the end of a day when, you know, maybe you're hurting and, and, you know, if you're at somebody else's house or a hotel, it's not always easy to find, you know, like even a Ziploc doesn't work great. Um, I mean, it does, but it'll leak a little bit. I can fall asleep on this, no issues. So that goes in there. And then I'm gonna throw my headsets in here. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll throw my headsets in uh, socks to kind of help keep them from rattling around too much. I'm not too worried about it this time uh, with how I've got everything, but you can see I've got my headsets in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw the, the charging block over here and we will put 
our charger over here. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the calipers. You know, it's always like, there's nothing implicitly wrong about bringing calipers on a plane. Like it's not, it's not forbidden. They're a measuring device and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, I, I, I would say that in general, I try to uh, ruffle as few feathers as possible when traveling with firearms as it is. And you know, like you just don't wanna be that guy. So uh, the I'll go ahead and throw these. I have a little bit of room left in my checked bag. So I'll go ahead and throw the calipers in there. I'm still gonna have a few things, like I've got a really lightweight jacket that's gonna go in here. Uh, I also have, uh, so these, this is my ammo block uh, from Cortina Precision. And these are nice because they just fold up. Uh, I originally had one that you would take apart and screw it together and it was three pieces and it was really nice. But uh, I'll tell you, going to a fold up system like this, and these are tensioned so that um, it holds the ammo up real well but you can just fold it down and throw it in your bag or whatever. Um, that's been wonderful. So um, I'll end up with that as well. And then, like I said, a couple of, um, probably a jacket. Uh, I, have, I have a really, I have like one of those uh, puffy jackets that condenses down to almost nothing and it will fit in here. And, uh, and then just a small toiletry bag will end up in here. And that's about it. So uh, this stays with me 100% of the time. Doesn't matter if I'm running to the bathroom, getting on the plane, going to get, uh, you know, whatever, a rental. Like this is, like the backpack's with me. So um, that's why I choose to put these particular things in here. And this is just how I do it. Now, I have friends who travel differently with their firearms. They will... Uh, cut out in foam and I used to do it this way uh, where they put their their like their actions separate from the stock they'll take the stock off and they'll travel with the rifle scope on the action still but then separate the stock so you don't end up with you know any cracked stocks or broken bedding or anything and um, I've just found that I've enjoyed the method where I pull my scope off and then I throw my gun in a soft case so that I've got a nice soft case to use at the match and it goes in a smaller uh, type case now and gets taken care of. So anyway, uh, you know, this gets massaged just a little bit. I've got, you know, gum and some, you know, crystal lights and stuff in here. Um, you know, I always keep a thing of wet wipes. So I go to the Dollar Tree and, and pick up just a small thing of, they're like baby wipes or wet wipes or something because you never know when you need to clean your hands, wipe off, do different things. So I always have um, wipes with me and a lot of guys I shoot with know I have these. So anytime they need something, they'll usually come to me for, um, you know, wiping down their hands or something. And, and so it's nice. But uh, other than that, uh, that's my backpack. Uh, hopefully when I get there, I will do a little unpacking video again to show you what my uh, suitcase looks like. It's pretty stuffed right now. And I will also show you my rifle case in detail. I did a quick short on it um, earlier, but uh, that's about it. So, oh, the only other thing I'll tell you is over here on the sides. So one of the things about 511 is it got these Molly straps and I do have this water bottle holder, which is nice because at the range I can throw, you know, like um, a water bottle in there and have it outside. But for traveling purposes, uh, I just have uh, one of these little parts things from Home Depot or whatever. And it's got uh, my, my sunshade, it's got my Mirage band, it's got some earplugs, stuff like that. And it just goes right on the side right here. And, um, easy peasy. So uh, that's how I do it. Again, it works differently for everybody, but maybe this helps gives you some tips or tricks that might work for you if you plan on traveling, uh, you know, to a match or firearms uh, training or hunting or something like that. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good one. We'll talk later.